Okay, so part C here is asking us to find y equals f of x, so the function, um, which is considered the particular solution to this differential equation. And then they give us this initial condition. Um, for the record, they will not ask you to find the particular solution if they don't give you this initial condition. The only reason you can do that is because you have this initial condition. Um, and because you'll be familiar that with this idea, of if you take the antiderivative of anything, a function, you're gonna have this weird constant of integration, which is a general family of functions. And so when you have an initial condition, you can plug that in after you have those antiderivatives. And then that allows you to pinpoint exactly what that constant is so you can have a particular solution. Okay, so in this case, um, dy dx is equal to y squared times 2x plus 2. And so what we do is we want to separate the variables. And actually, in any free response dog question, this is incredibly important. If you do not show that you separate the variables at all, then they can give you zero credit um, for the entire part. So you don't want to miss that because there's five points here that are possible uh, to score. The way you do this is you simply want get all the y's with the dy's and then the x with the dx. So in this case, I can just divide both sides by the y squared and then I can multiply both sides by this dx and that'll kind of flip flop everything around. So if I take, I just still have the dy, I divide both sides by y squared and then I'm multiplying both sides by that dx. So we'd have 2x plus 2 dx, great. And now once we've shown that, now we can then move on to the integration step. So this step right here is incredibly important. Always make sure you have that. Um, let me grab the color again. So now we integrate, and that literally just means drop the integral bar, of dy over y squared equals the integral from 2x plus 2 dx. Now, depending on how comfortable you are and how much practice you have with taking integrals of power rules, especially when you're dealing with a negative exponent, because if you consider, since this is in the denominator, it's really um, y to the negative 2 going on here. So either way, you can rewrite it out to do the power rule, however it makes more sense to you. Um, since most people are comfortable from the power rule, I'm just going to rewrite it in that form. So this is really just y to the negative two power. You see how that works, times dy. Um, when you throw this into the numerator, multiply it against the dy, you just negate the exponent. And this is still 2x plus 2 dx. Okay, so now we can evaluate the antiderivatives. The way the power rule works is that we raise this exponent by one and then we divide by whatever that new exponent is. So in this case, we have y. So negative two, if we raise that by one, that's just negative one, so we have negative one. And then we divide by whatever this new power is, which happens to be negative one. So great, that's what this is. And then we, we all simplify that to something cleaner in the next step. Um, and then this is equal to, so what gives us 2x? Well, that's pretty common, hopefully easily recognizable. If you take x squared and you take the derivative of x squared, you will get back to 2x. So that's why this is this antiderivative. And then whenever you're given a constant like two, um, you just tack on the variable and that's the antiderivative because derivative of 2x is two. It's always good to double check that this does work, um, x squared, if you differentiated this, you get 2x, and then 2x, if you differentiate that, you get 2. So this is correct. Now, never, never, never forget the plus c. <laughs> it's kind of, it's very important. And there's a whole separate individual point for just writing the plus c. So even if you messed up the antiderivative, but you wrote plus c, you get a point. So it's very important uh, to have that as well. I think I'm going to leave another star here. Add the plus c. Even if you do make a little mistake here, they will give you credit for that. Um, and now the rest is really just a little bit of value. Let me get this into a cleaner state. So this negative one is really just gonna have a negative one over y because y to the negative one would just be sticking it into the denominator. 
and x squared plus 2x plus c. So what do we do about this c? Well, remember at the top of the problem, I'm just going to rewrite it down here since I don't want to scroll back up. They told us that our initial condition was this, that the function had its value. So where x equaled 0, when x equaled 0, then y, the function value, was negative 1. So we can imagine the x being 0 here and the y being negative 1. We just have to plug those values in and we all just have C as the only unknown number in this and then we can get a numerical value. So let's plug in Y equals negative one over here and then plug in zero over here. And hopefully you can see, right? Zero times anything, zero. So this, this is, these, both of these statements are going to go to zero. So there's nothing except for C on this side. And the, negative and negative cancels out. So you really just have C equals one. So when you find that this constant is now one, you can plug it back in up here and then finally just rearrange and solve, you know, for the actual function. So we have, let me move this out of the way just a little bit. We're going to have the negative one over y. And remember, I'm, I'm starting back here because I'm now plugging in the initial, uh, the c value we calculated into what we had. So negative one over y equals x squared plus two x. And now the plus c is the plus the one. Now, all we have to do is we're asked, the, very, the wording is specific here, and this is important to get the very last of these five points. Um, y equals f of x. So to get f of x, the particular solution, we need to get an expression in, with y isolated on one side. Um, we're close, but right now it's just a little bit messed up. We can reciprocate and then divide, we can divide both sides by negative one, right? So we would have y equals a negative one over x squared plus 2x plus 1. You could circle that, be done. There is a slightly cleaner way to finish this problem if you are a nitpick for algebra and like beautiful math. Um, y was f of x, like your particular solution here, is going to be negative 1 over x plus 1 squared, because this is a perfect square. It's that square of a binomial. <laughs> that being said, if you circled this, and where it's done, you would, you would get all five points. Um, but they just have this here as an algebraic thing in, in case you wanted to do it. Um, so where are you getting these five points from, right? Every single, no matter what, College Board has made it so that they're in, after 2016, and they made it so that these differential equation problems are worth five, question, five points, and they divvy them up with this. You get one for just separating the variables. Like I started this already, this is very important. Get a whole point for this. Um, you get a point for properly evaluating these antiderivatives right here. So again, another important step. Going from here to here, um, the constant of integration in itself um, is an entire point all by itself right here. So you could get, those are two individual points you can get. Um, the initial condition is something that people genuinely just forget to use and plug in for these general solutions. So just by merit of you substituting things in right here and calculating what that initial um, condition is, you get a point. And then finally, to top everything off, you're going to get that last point for actually answering the question that was originally posed, and that is the general solutions um, of f of x. All right, so that is all for um, question five on the 2013 AP Calculus BC exam.